introduced Derek Stoughton from Southeastern Louisiana University, and his, uh, I didn't really ask him, but it looks like he might be all the stuff that would be so for people. Oh, absolutely. That's, 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 that's how we get to this. Absolutely. Right. Uh, None of my thoughts are original. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. Good morning. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I know that you could have gone to a number of sessions today. I'm honored that you chose to come here. See, hear what I had to say, and hopefully what I say makes sense and all that kind of stuff. Um, first off, I do want to say thank you to LDA and everybody who came out to support the ensembles of Southeastern this week. Uh, it's, all of our ensembles are grateful for the opportunity to perform over the last four days, and your support and what we're doing is really a wonderful thing. So thank you guys again so much for that. So today I'm going to talk about the perfect fourth and one. Musical lessons learned from the greatest coaches of all time. So let me ask a question to everybody. How many sports fans do we have in the room? Raise your hand if you're a sports fan. I assume that's why some of you are here. <coughs> Very cool. Me too. I'm a huge sports fan as well. I grew up in sports. My family, uh, my uncle played in the NHL. He was a goal scorer in the NHL. My dad was a coach of my league hockey team. So I grew up with sports. It's become a second, second thing to music. I learned on. I learned early on in my life, however, that I was not going to be the athlete of the family. And there's a reason that I chose band, you know, the, I didn't choose band, the band chose me. So we found early on that, you know, I was, I remember I was at a hockey game one time, and I was playing hockey, and the play was down to the other end, and I was back in the defense bed reading the signs of the, that was going around the arena, and my dad pulled me aside, and he goes, you realize you were reading the signs? So anyways, we knew that, that I was not going to be the yeah. But anyways, but I've had a love for sports, and about two years ago, I was watching the Alabama Clemson National Championship game in 2017. I think it was like the 37th iteration of that game was going on. And as I was watching the game, I just remember thinking that it's, I just remember thinking to myself, how does, how do these coaches really get to get all of their players to buy into what they're doing and to really get them all on the same page and get them all to do what they needed to do to become the best college football team in the country. Like I think it was just amazing uh, to me how they were able to do that. And so I started doing some research and started thinking about how what they do compares to what we do as musicians, teachers, uh, all that sort of thing. And I found in my research <coughs> that there are a number of parallels between what coaches do and what the teachers do uh, as and that's what we do as music educators, you know, all these coaches and, I mean, they're teachers, just like all of us in this room uh, want to be. So I said, what do athletes and musicians have in common? And I said, there's many parallels between being a great athlete and being a great musician. It takes discipline, dedication, practice, and experience, both individually and in a team setting, to be successful in a career in music. Athletes work on strength training and drills for their sport. Musicians work on scales, rhythm charts, tone, etc. Those are our daily, those are our, you know, running laps and doing push-ups and going to the weight room. So that's all that sort of stuff. And oftentimes the road to being a great musician or athlete starts very young in life. And this professional right over here, this is Dabba Sweeney, he's the head coach of the Clemson Tigers. Uh, I don't like the um, so anyways, and he was he won the national championship a few years ago. Great coach, really wonderful. What do coaches and music educators have in common? Coaches have to manage their staff, teach and motivate their players, create a game plan for each week, recruit new players for their team. In addition, they have to work with their administration to ensure that they are happy with a coach's performance. You hear all the time the news about you know, coaches working with their ADs, and stuff like that. Music educators have to do all this as well. They have to hire assistant directors and support staff, private lesson teachers, marching techs, for those of you guys that are marching band, they have to teach and motivate their students to be the best they can be, select music for their ensembles, which is the equivalent of coming up with a game plan each week, recruiting members for their programs, so high school directors go down to the middle schools, middle schools go to the elementary schools, college, college directors go to the high schools as well. In addition, they have to work with the administration to ensure that they're getting the support they need to make their programs function. These characteristics are applicable, applicable to elementary, middle school, high school, college directors. Principles are the same, they just basically adjust what they have to do for the level that that teacher is teaching. So what can we learn as music educators from the greatest coaches of all time? Now this first one I'm going to bring up, I understand I'm probably about to say a curse word here in the state of Louisiana. <laughs> and some of you guys know where I'm going with this. The first coach is not going to say that. You get your 
who's out now. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Coach Saban is the head football coach with the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. He's won six national championships in the modern era. He won one in LSU, so you know, I got you. Five at Alabama. This, this next one I think is really important. He has mentored several successful coaches, including Jason Garrett, Dallas Cowboys. He's successful in his own right. Um, Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M, Georgia, the free guy, um, et cetera. And he's considered by many to be the greatest college football coach of all time. And he was actually the biggest, he's where I got this idea from, from this book right here. It's a book called How Good Do You Want to Be? Uh, he wrote this back, he actually wrote this back in 2004. This is right after he won the national championship at LSU. And he wrote the book and he talks about what he does to get his team ready, all of the different administrative things he has to do. If you haven't read this book, has anybody read this book? Okay, if you, if you don't, I highly recommend this book. This is an excellent, an excellent book. I've actually, uh, when I've been doing some sessions with my marching band in the summer, I've actually used this book as a basic presentation. He talks about developing the product, the game plan, putting the game plan into practice, etc. So he says there are three foundations to building a championship team. To develop a good product, to know the competition and teamwork. And if you think about it, what we do as music educators, as music educators, we have to do all of these things as well. Developing the product. The first thing he talks about, he talks about the roadmap. So you need a plan. How are you going to get where you want to go? This is something I think is really important. To create a mission statement for your band program, which encompasses the principles and culture that you want to create in your organization. How many of you guys have Vision statements, vision statements in your band room. Some of you guys do. Okay. If you don't, I definitely think this is something that you should that you should look at doing. You know, create a mission statement, post it around your band room. So when your kids walk into your room every day, they can say, "This is what our program is all about." I think that's very, very really important, and it really is a good unifying way to bring all of your people together. Creating a culture of expectations. Once you've got a mission statement, and you clearly define who you are and where you want to go. There's no debate about it. So when people ask you, what is your program all about? You can tell them, well, here it is, it's our mission statement. This is what we do. But what does that look like? What actions will allow you to get where you want to go? I think the mission statement is important too, because not only do coaches do it, but a lot of Fortune 500 companies around the world have mission statements for their brand, products, <coughs> Southwest, all that sort of stuff. If you need help creating a mission statement, uh, Dave Ramsey, how many of you guys know Dave Ramsey? You guys heard that name? So he, uh, in addition to being a wonderful financial guru, he actually, a lot about leadership, and he actually has got a session. Uh, if you go to Entree Leadership, he's got a session about it. It's 12 steps of creating a mission statement. I definitely check that out, and it helps you all the steps. Really, really terrific. Definitely check that out. Commitment, conviction, character, and attitude. These are another four things that Rosario talks about. So, commitment, your dedication to the task, and these are these are attributes that you want to make sure that you have for yourself and for your students. Your dedication to your task, organization, your peers and colleagues. An unwavering display of loyalty to the process and to achieving the desired result. Conviction. Your strong belief in what you're doing. I believe these are things that we all need to have. It is the reason that you're committed, the purpose behind your sacrifice, and the belief that what you are doing is not only what you should be doing, but what you must do. Conviction makes sacrifice possible. I love that statement. Conviction makes sacrifice possible. So if you believe deep down that in what you're doing you will do whatever it takes to get there. And I think all of us who really love music and love teaching and love kids know that there's some sacrifices involved in that. You have to sacrifice some time with your families, you have to sacrifice you know, a lot of hobbies, things like that. But at the end of the day, when we all see our students being really successful, it just there's no better feeling in the world, and it makes the sacrifice worth it. Character, the essence of who you are as a person. Telling the truth when the truth hurts. Doing the right thing when no one is around. Overcoming adversity, being resilient, having the courage to stand up for what you believe in. Character, that's a big one. I really like how this statement to uh, overcoming adversity and being res being resilient because we're all going to face hardships. You know it. You know we're going to there's going to be problems. You know we're going to get to a point where we're going to run into some issues. You know the day of the contest, your first chair jumper player all of a sudden is sick, or you know you get to a marching contest and for some reason the percussion the percussionist didn't load the truck the right way and the marimba has fallen on top of the vibraphone and the synthesizer doesn't work or whatever. So it's going to happen, but. You learn from those things and you move on. And then the last one is attitude. It's critical to your success. Having a positive attitude can have a tremendous effect on how you react and respond to challenges, successes, and failures. More importantly, attitude is directly affected by expectations. If you expect things to be difficult, 
it will be easier to solve problems, overcome adversity, and have an enthusiastic energy towards how you go about and enjoy your work. So think about it for a second. How did you react to the different, uh, to the difficult challenges that you've recently faced? And all of us have had them. You know, I think certainly for us at Southeastern, we've had some difficulties, and you know, it's stress, uh, stress is getting ready for our time here at LBA, but. You know, we reacted to it, we just hit it head on, we didn't complain, we didn't throw hissy fits, we didn't, you know, all that stuff. We just said, okay, this is the hand we've been dealt with, this is what we're gonna do. So I think it's very important just to remember how do you react to the different challenges that you've recently faced. Work ethic. By the way, all of these uh, bold points, these are some things that Nick Saban talks about in his book. And he's, he goes into detail about that, but I've adapted it to what we do as we sketch later. This one goes without saying. You must do a good job every time and never settle for anything less than your best effort. And it takes hard work to do it the right way. While success is a great thing, there will always be things that you can work on. As carefully study your product, find what the areas of improvement are and work on them. This applies to both your personal growth and the growth of your students. This, we've always got to work on how to be better. And I talk to my students about this all the time. Uh, whenever I, you know, I'm always constantly, I think Dr. Nina talked about this in his clinic yesterday, um, my students can tell you. I'm always videoing myself every day, going back and watching myself, and it is, it's terrifying. Watching yourself teach and just say, oh my God. Usually when I watch myself teach, I have a glass of wine with me because it's just, I need it to <laughs> numb the pain in some days. But, um, but it needs, but you know, we're always trying to find ways to improve and get better. There's always new ideas. There's always somebody that's going to be better than you. So there are many, many people that are better than me. A ton of so, but that's why we try to get better, that's why we come to these things to get new ideas. So I think that's very, very, very important. The ability to persevere. Have you ever noticed that we most often grow when we have failed? Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. <coughs> think about that. We always remember Jordan's game winning shots, but we forget the many more that he missed. He wasn't afraid to go for it. He could put aside his mistakes and shortcomings instantly and move on to the next play. Can you, can your students? How many times did we dwell in the past and say, oh my God, well, we had a bad run today. That's it, it's over. It's, you know, is Walmart hired? You know, uh, something like that. But <laughs> let's face it, we've all had those thoughts, right? You know, it's, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, but can you move on? It's really important. And then the ability to overcome adversity. Unexpected circumstances are going to occur. It's just part of life. How you choose to handle it will say everything about whether you and the organization will be a success or not. I mean, to me, I think that's absolutely. Adversity creates opportunity. Champions rise to the occasion. When an obstacle presents itself, not if, but when. When you ask the question, why me? Or can I or how can I overcome this? That tells a lot about our character right there. Is when an issue comes up and we say, well, that's it. God hates me. It's over. It's, you know, or okay, this is happening. What are we gonna do about it? I think that's huge. Okay, so some lessons from the developing the products. I love this first quote. Invest your time, don't spend it. You don't always get what you want, but you always get what you deserve. Patience is a necessity for success, and this last one, enjoy your work. We always have to find ways to remind ourselves why we do what we do. When was the last time you sat down and listened to a Brahms symphony from beginning to end? When was the last time you sat down and just, listened, and just by yourself, no one around, with your headphones on, and listened to Appalachian Spring from beginning to end? It's been a while for me too, but sometimes we just have to remind ourselves why we're doing what we're doing. I think that that's absolutely, absolutely crucial. Okay, competitive spirit. Focus. The world has changed greatly over the last 50 years. Technology has completely changed the way that the world works, and our brains naturally go in a thousand different directions most of the time. Am I speaking to anybody here? Speaking to me. It is important to remove the unnecessary clutter from your organization, minimize distractions, and maximize focus. This is an interesting, interesting one too, dealing with success. Believe it or not, some people don't deal with success well. Am I speaking to anybody in here? They don't enjoy being rewarded or recognized for a job well done. They'd much rather go back to the background and be unnoticed in their field. I, I'm seeing some people nod their heads. They're like, I just want to do my job and go home. However, you should expect to have success. That's what happens to people who will work hard and are good at what they do. 
That being said, continue to look at what can be improved and focus on that in the future. I think that's important. And I, I haven't figured out why that is. If anybody knows why that is, let me know. I can't. I don't understand the psychology behind that. You know why people don't deal with successful and are not happy when they're successful. It's like, okay, great, now we're gonna move on. I I don't know why that is. So if anybody knows, please let me know. Let me know here. I want to know because I'm like that. Like somebody says, oh, these great things. Oh, great, thank you very much. Let's move on. You know, it's really important. It's so easy to become complacent following big success. Once a particular goal is achieved, the process to reaching it becomes replaced with the accolades of being successful in task. However, it is much easier to get to the top of the mountain than it is to stay there. Once you're on top and you know, you've won the marching contest and won showcase, people are gunning for you. You're like, okay, that's we've got to, all right, that's the model now. So the people, once you get there, you have to think to yourself, okay, what do we have to do to stay there? What do we have to do to reinvent ourselves to make sure that we're trying to get better? Because we've arrived, but people are coming after us. We need to be ready to go. So what do we need to do to be better? And what I'm talking, what I'm talking, you know, a lot of times I'm talking to teachers uh, who run ensemble. This also applies to individuals. You know, if you're trying to become a performance major and trying to win a symphony job, you know, once you get that job, that's all well and good. You know, sometimes a lot of those jobs, you know, they're not necessary per contract. You know, you could be replaced if somebody better comes along. So, what are you trying to do to get better? To constantly make sure that you're becoming the best part of the GDP. So just think about that. Once success is achieved, yourself and your organization must work harder to maintain that hunger to create the best product possible. It's so easy to get to the top, like, we're good. That's actually really dangerous. Self-imposed limitations. In some instances, the biggest reason for the lack of your success is you. There is an insecurity about some aspect of your life that you don't want to face and therefore cannot maximize your potential. What is your capacity for success? What self-imposed limitations keep you from accomplishing tasks? How many times have you said, I can't do this? How many times have you seen somebody or heard somebody better than you on your instrument and said, oh, that's it, it's over? How many times have you seen master teachers teach like, oh, I can't do that? I've had that, I probably have those feelings 20 times a semester. We all do, we all do it. So just think about it. what self-imposed limitations from accomplishing your tasks. I think the segues into the next one, and that's the fear of failure. This is the biggest self-imposed limitation that comes from insecurity. Michael Jordan made less than 50% of the shots he took in his career. What if Steve Jobs or Bill Gates were afraid to fail and they stopped when their first prototypes didn't work? We wouldn't be looking at this presentation right now because I wouldn't have a MacBook or an iPhone. Even if you failed, the sun will rise tomorrow. And I think this is very important, and, and obviously we love what we do, and we're very passionate about it, but at the end of the day, it's just there. We just have to remind ourselves sometimes, at the end of the day, if we had a bad rehearsal, or a bad competition, or something like that, <coughs> nobody got it. You know, so we, we, sometimes we just have to remind ourselves, you know, it's just now, and I'm not suggesting that we're not passionate about it and that we don't need to give it our all 110%, but it's just there. And we have to remind ourselves today. And the people whose opinion you should really care about will not care if you make a mistake or fail, especially if you learn something from it. How many times do we care so much about what random people think? And we go into like, oh my God, I, we've got this performance of somebody who I don't know is gonna do <coughs> something horrible about us on social media. Oh my God, uh, uh. I really don't care a lot. Like if I'm just being honest, I really don't care. I care, I, the people that mean the most to me, and some of them are in this room, those are the people who I care about. But just random person who feels like they have an opinion. Have you ever noticed that people who aren't necessarily the best at what they do are the most willing to tell you what they think? They will help you off the ground and continue to support you no matter what. Voice of reason. If you control your voice of fear, your voice of reason will flourish. This goes back to overcoming adversity. When a situation occurs where you panic or you keep your cool and logically come up with a solution based on your training. And the honor of competition. When the opportunity presents itself, approach the challenge not with concern about the outcome, but with courage to do your best. Find honor in how you compete. This be dangerous for marching band directors. Yep. If 
you and your students have truly given it everything you have and have let every bit of yourselves out there after your performance, then you cannot truly lose because it comes out of your hands at that point. You know, if you put it all out there and you give an incredible performance and your students to the absolute best that they can do, and you and you're we've all had those moments where your students have done something amazing and you're in tears because of how wonderful that they did. But then, you know, they end up in fifth or sixth or seventh place or something like that. And we, it's kind of a weird thing about marching band is we put all of these, we put this incredible time and energy, and it's really up to the hands of five people. And you know how they don't, you know, it's it's just the nature of what we do. And that's not good or bad, that just it is what it is. And so just remember, if if you do the best that you can and your students just brought it, that's really wonderful. So here's just a few lessons. Don't look at the scoreboard. If things are going great, and you just all of a sudden, man, things are going well, uh-oh. You know, see a Patriots Falcons from a couple years ago. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> climb the mountain, but watch your steps. So that means as you're ascending the mountain, make sure that you're still watching along the way. Just be aware of everything around you. Don't worry about mouse manure when you're up to your ears in elephant duty. <coughs> so if you're worried about this, you know, you've got big stuff going on and all of a sudden, you know, a student forgot their pencil at your rehearsal, you go off on that student. How many times has that happened to us? Mm -hmm. Me. We, we were thinking about all these wonderful things, we were thinking about all these things that we have to do, and then for some reason some minor thing sets us off. So just, just mark that. Being focused does not necessarily mean having tunnel vision. So be focused on what you're doing, but be aware of everything around you. A lack of focus can be the result of a lack of experience. I love this quote, this next one. Remember that success is never final and fear is never fatal. I love that quote. Accept that you will make mistakes and don't dwell on them, and lessons should be learned in both success and failure. Okay, I'll try to, I'll try to do quote. Know the competition. I feel that in this case, competition can be defined as the ins and outs of any situation that you are entering when there are unknown factors. For example, search and knowing as much about any unknown situation before entering. You've gone to a site that you've never been to before. Where do I park the bus? Where do I, okay, where do we enter? How's the band gonna sit in the seats? If you're taking an audition, okay, where do I enter? Where do I check in? Where's the warm up room? All that sort of stuff. In a job interview, it's crucial to know as much as you can about the school, program, and position that you are interviewing for. So for those of you that are preparing to apply for jobs and stuff like that, do your research. Know who the head director is, know how the ratings have been in the past, all that sort of stuff. In a, in a concert, the stage or hall can be the competition. How are the acoustics in the room? How's the balance going to be? Know as much as you can about any situation that can help you. Know yourself. How well do you know yourself? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are you not good at? Do you know where you're going? I have to ask my students that a lot. Do you have a plan for the next five years? So most of them look at me like, um, what's your plan for the next five years? What do you bring to the table that can give people that you work with an advantage? Knowing everything about yourself to maximize the potential of your students and help you figure out how, to, how you personally fit within the team. Everybody's leadership style is different. So you've got to figure out which leadership style works for you. Make sure that you can share that with your students. And you also, when you guys have the opportunity to hire staff, you want to bring in people that complement your weakness. You know, bring in somebody that, like, I'm a percussionist by trade. Um, I was okay at brass. I was a terrible, terrible woodwind player. <laughs> you tried to put a flute. When I was taking my methods course, and I had to try to play flute, it did not go well. My teacher told me, he said, Derek, if you ever get a student that has lips like yours that wants to play the flute, tell them no. <laughs> like, it was bad. <clears throat> so I always am asking people, but I have to always ask one of the questions because I don't know my flute fingering, so I'll be honest about that. Sorry, flute players. I really don't know my flute fingering very well. So, but I have to ask them. Okay. Anticipate problems and prepare. As previously stated, problems are going to occur. If you're going to a contest, a marching contest, it might rain. <coughs> what are you going to do? 
if you're going to a concert hall venue, someone may forget their music. How many times does that happen to you guys? You got to a contest site, and all of a sudden your various sax player comes up. Um, um, Mr. Stonyers, I forgot my folder. That's never happened to you, though, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> you need to anticipate any problems that may occur and be prepared for them. Wayne Gretzky said, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it's been. When did Noah build the ark? Before it rained. Embrace change. The only thing that is constant in life is change. We've all heard the saying a million times, but it doesn't make it any less true. Nobody ever grows inside their comfort zone, and change is risky and uncomfortable. But it is also real life, and you need to not only anticipate change, but also embrace the law. You may get a new principle that all of a sudden is not really supportive of what you're doing. How are you going to bring them to your side? You, know, you may have an uh, assistant who's the best assistant you've ever had in your life. You know, all of a sudden is going to go take a head job, and you're very excited for them. So change is going to happen. Your school may all of a sudden go from 5A to 6A. What are you going to do? Just think about that. So, lessons learned from knowing the competition. You always want to think 10 miles out, be thinking ahead. Prepare for the worst. Know that change can lead to better choices. Change is a good thing. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to, uh, to watch Steve Harvey. He's got a talk called Jump. Anybody seen that? Okay. If you haven't, just look up Steve Harvey Jump. He says that, he talks about, you're standing on the cliff of life. You can, stand, you can stand on the cliff of life and just watch life pass you by and be safe, and it's cool. But everybody in their life who's been successful has jumped. And they have taken a chance. So it's watch the talk. It's, it's awesome. Learn from change. Make a decision and don't look back. Accept that you never know where life is going to take you. I'm originally from Kimberly, British Columbia, Canada. I spent 15 years in Texas. Did my master's degree at Oklahoma State, and now I'm here giving a clinic in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> what? How <laughs> did a kid from a 7,000 person town in Canada end up here at, a, at the Louisiana Music Educators Conference? That's good. I've never heard that joke before. <laughs> okay. Teamwork. Intelligence, immediacy, intensity, integrity. Intelligence. The ability to make sound decisions on your feet and play smart. Immediacy. The sense of urgency in completing a task. The belief that now is the time to act. I'll do it later. That's cool. Why not do it now? Get it done. Tis. The emotion and passion that an individual brings to the table. And integrity. The, attack, the act of doing the right thing all the time because it's the right thing to do. That's important. So, lessons learned from teamwork. And again, a lot of this stuff is in the book. There's no I in team, but there is an I in win. Everything you do, you do to the team. Get out of yourself and into the team. How many times do we put our own needs in front of those, in front of our students? Don't forget fundamentals. This is important even, I think, even in college. Our college at, at Southeastern, we do fundamentals every single day. We play scales every single day. Do not allow mistakes to go uncorrected, and I am guilty of this. I sometimes go right past something and say, I don't get too late, and I have to be better about that. Having skill is not having talent. Those are two very different things. You must trust in your people, not just believe. And that's tough. Trust is tough. Sometimes what is best for the individual is not as best what is best for the team, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, you've got to dress rehearsal before your concert, but all of a sudden your first church jumping player tells you, my mom just passed away. I need to go be with them. Absolutely. Life. Teams must take ownership for themselves and their personalities. Teams that often play together end up lucky. Have you ever heard the saying, the better you are, the luckier you get? It's true. With your A game, you can beat anybody. Anything less, and they can beat you. Look at the NCAA tournament. 16 seed beat a 1 seed a couple years ago because they believe. Mediocre people hate high achievers, and high achievers hate mediocre people. That is so true. So, any questions so far? Okay, I know I've talked about Nick Saban for a while, so I will move on to somebody else. We'll change sports here. I'm going to talk about John Wood. John Wood was a former men's basketball coach for the University of, uh, University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA Bruins. 
won 10 NCAA national championships in 12 years. <coughs> 88 straight games and had four undefeated seasons. Was named the coach of the century by ESPN and is considered by many to be the greatest coach of all time in any sport. Anybody heard, anybody, you guys heard of John Wood before? Over? If you haven't, he's an absolute <coughs> The book that I recommend by him, he's written over about 10 books, but this book, Wooden on Leadership, he actually, in the last part of his career, uh, and really throughout his career, focused on not just teaching basketball, but teaching leadership, and teaching how to get people to be the best that they can be through basketball. Thus, he discusses the 15 fundamental leadership qualities, outlines the pyramid of success, and has won over 10, one of over 10 books that Wooden has authored. His big thing is called the Pyramid of Success. You can actually find this online. If you go to www.coachjohnwooden.com, you can actually find that. And uh, I don't remember that name, but um, it's coachjohnwooden.com. And he talks about the Pyramid of Leadership. That's, it's an excellent book, by the way. This is the Pyramid of Success. I'll go over this one quickly. So you have the base of the pyramid, the foundation. What makes great leaders great? Industriousness. Nothing can replace hard work. It takes a strong work ethic to be successful in anything in life. Friendship. And this, I think, is important. Sometimes what a lot of us miss. While what we do as musicians and educators can be competitive at times, we have to remember that everyone in our profession, for the most, of, most part, wants to help and wants everyone to get better. We all want to help each other. We all want to be better. That's why we come to these things. You know, I, Whenever I get a chance to hear somebody that's better than I am, I always take the opportunity. I always ask my friends for help. What can I do? What are you doing? You know, what ideas do you have? And we have to remember, I think sometimes, you know, we all get so busy with what we're doing that we have, we have to remember that it's okay to have friends too. It's okay to have friends in our profession. And that's really important. Be true to yourself and those who you lead. All that we send out to others comes back to us. If you're a good person, people will want to be around you. If you care about others, people will want to be around you. How many of you have heard the saying, people don't care what you know until they know that you care? I mean, that's one of the found fundamental building blocks of teaching. We have to be loyal to our students and our staff before they will be loyal to us. Again, okay, remember, no one cares what you know until they know that you care. I forgot to put that in for you. Have utmost concern for what is right, not who is right. Work together to find the best solution for each problem and the best outcome for the group. One person can be the majority. If you have the best idea, if you're the only one that comes up with an idea, I'm taking that idea. I ask my students all the time, and I, again, you know, we've heard this in other sessions before, you know. All right, what do you think we should do here? Well, I think we should do this. Oh, that's a really good idea. I never thought about it that way. We're doing that. Enthusiasm. Why do we do what we do? We have to share with our students that we are excited about them and being at the them, along with our passion for teaching them music. Again, remind yourself why we do what we do. Again, actually. That right there is the base, the foundation of what we do, those five things right there. So then we get to the pyramid second tier. Self-control. Control of your organization begins with control of yourself. Be disciplined. Discipline forcefully when necessary, but be fair and hold no pressures. Coach Wood never cussed a day in his life. How many of you guys have heard, I know, <coughs> high school too, have been around high school football and basketball coaches and heard couple of choice words when they're disciplining their students. Just be firm and fair. Constantly alert. Just constantly be aware and observe. Always seek to improve yourself and the team. Once the big picture stuff is in place, what little things can be done to improve? Always take time to take inventory of where you are. Always take time to take inventory of where you are. I'm going to add a word. Make a decision and stick to it. You might be right, you might be wrong. Uh, this is nothing I'm bad at, and I need to do better about Intent is to stay the course. Obstacles are going to happen. I know I say that a lot, but it's it's really important. Obstacles are going to happen. It took John Wooden 29 years of coaching to win a national championship. He did this for almost 30 years until he finally reached the top. So stay with it. Stay with it. It's going to be all right. The heart of the pyramid. Condition. Not just physical, but mental and moral as well. What are you doing to prepare your students for music? What are your exercises, warm-ups, daily drill, etc.? Are you taking time to discuss other musical concepts besides the activity that you're focusing on? When was the last time that you as a 
band, uh, band teacher, band conductor, played Renee Fleming, a recording of Renee Fleming. When did you play for them amongst our string quartet? There's just as much that can be learned on that as there is in the great literature for wings. Most of the stuff on my iPod is not band music. Most of the stuff I listen to is, I actually listen to podcasts most of the time when I'm in the car, just to get away from things. But you know, most of the music that I listen to is orchestral music, vocalists. I learned, I learned so much from them. When I am through learning, I am through. I tell that all the time. If, if we ever, and I tell this to myself too, if we ever think we've got this teaching thing figured out, we need to find a new profession. I really believe that anyways. So the second I feel like, damn, I got this, I'm a master teacher, nobody's better than me. I'm getting out of the field. Because I just, that's, that's not possible. What can we do to get better, learn more? There is always new literature, teaching techniques, and technology that we can use to help us grow. The star of the team is the team. We supersede team. We all have that one student who is a superstar. But what about the other students in the ensemble? The star needs them just as much as they need the star. I think that's really important. As a teacher, do you feel that you are the star? You need your students just as much as your students need you. And we have to remember that sometimes. We have to remember that they don't know what they're doing. I, I got this. I know what they're doing. I know what I'm doing. They need to all listen to me. But again, they may have the best idea. You should go with it. Poise. Be yourself. Don't be thrown off by the events that are bad. Both success and failure can change you. Don't panic under pressure. Be calm. Leaders are not allowed to have bad days in public. But when you go home, you can cry and complain to your spouse and say, oh my God, this happened to me, blah, 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 blah. But you gotta keep it cool in public. A great mentor of mine once said, you must, you must always praise in public, but then correct things in private. It's very, very, very important. Confidence. Don't let this be confused with arrogance or elitism. Always treat every performance or competition with respect. When you don't, things fall apart. The second people want to think, I got this. We are easily going to be the best at this competition. That's what we should turn. Okay, I'll play this clip really quick. Hopefully this works. Any Seinfeld fans in here? Okay. Hopefully this works. <coughs> Questions really that important? Like yes, that? they're important. If you stumble, if you hesitate, you can kiss the crowd goodbye. Now, if I told you once, I've told you a thousand times, boys counts. It's just as important as the others. Swimsuit, evening wear, talent, boys. <laughs> really have nothing to do with this presentation. I just saw the word boys pop up. Okay, competitive greatness. Perform at your best. Your best is required. Your best is required every day. Consistent your students practice like they will perform. Hmm. Most groups can't suddenly turn it on when it's time to perform. That includes teachers as well. That's that's tough to do is to, to really get your students to practice like they're going to perform. So faith, things will work out the way that they should, and then patience. Genius is nothing but a greater aptitude for patience. Okay, real quick, I'll look at this 12 lessons in leadership. These are on the bottom part of the pyramid there. Good values attract good people. Love is the most powerful four letter word. Call yourself a teacher. That's important. <laughs> emotion is your enemy. And I know that as musicians, emotion is a big part of what we do. But sometimes we can make rash decisions because we're really, really upset. And you just gotta watch for that. It takes 10 hands to make a basket means that there's five in basketball, there's five players on the team, and all it takes ten of them working together to get the ball in the basket. Little things make big things happen, doing a bunch of little things, make big things happen. Make each day your masterpiece. What are you doing to be the best that you can each day? The carrot is mightier than the stick. And what that means is that both long objects of course, but a carrot rewarding people for doing the great thing as opposed to the stick eating them when they're doing poorly. That means you want to teach by faith and encouragement, not by fear. And teaching by fear works in the short term. But if that becomes your MO, you're going to create a horrible culture, and it's just not going to work. 
make greatness attainable by all. Everybody has a level that they're going to reach. Make them be as great as they can possibly be. And that's not the same for everybody. And that's <coughs> Okay, seek significant change. Again, don't look at the scoreboard. And adversity is your asset. You'll notice a lot of, a lot of leadership books that you read, a lot of these concepts are the same. And it's, it's, it's to that fun. The best competition I have is against myself to become better. It's probably one of my favorite quotes. Uh, I think, I can't remember who said this, but my goal is not to beat the other team. My goal is to beat perfection. I don't coach against the other team. I coach against perfection. I love that. All right, really quick, let's talk about Pat Riley, president of the Miami Heat, former coach of the uh, Miami Heat, won five NBA championships, is considered to be one of the greatest NBA coaches of all time. So the one I talked about with him, his book, The Winner Within, among the wonderful qualities of this book are the seven qualities that can bring down any organization. So obviously a lot of things that can go well, but what, where, where, are we, where will we run into problems? This is called, I call this, or he calls this, the disease of me. This is stuff that we need, that we need to worry about. Inexperience in dealing with sudden success. Chronic feelings of underappreciation. How many of you have, how many of you have done a situation or know your students that have gotten into a situation that says, well, I do all these wonderful things. Why am I not being recognized about it? Have you ever noticed that the best people, what they do, let their work speak for themselves? And they don't walk around bragging, looking for accolades. They just put, they just put it all out there, and eventually the work speaks for itself. Paranoia over being cheated out of one's rightful share. Guess what, guys? Life isn't fair. Deal with it. Resentment against, resentment against the competence of partners. Good or bad. Personal effort must be solely to outshine a teammate. I'm going to work harder so I'm better than this person. A leadership vacuum resulting from the formation of cliques and rivalries. This can bring down a team in a second. This can bring down your group in a second. If for whatever reason, the percussion section and the trombones are fighting each other, for whatever reason, it's going to spread and people are going to start forming cliques and all that stuff. It's just not going to work. Feelings of frustration even when the team performs successfully. I am the worst about that. I am the absolute worst. I have, I am, I'm okay admitting that. Man, we've had a great performance, but golly, I heard that this was out of tune. I heard the wrong note over here, and I could shake this phrase as much as I wanted to. I mean, it's a, it, people say, oh man, great performance, great performance. But we all hear what didn't go well, and we focus on that, and I have to be better. So, anyways, just keep those things in mind. Okay. There are only two options regarding commitment. You're either in or you're out. There's no such thing as life in between. Okay. Talk about two more really quickly because I know we need to wrap this up. Um, Pat Summit, former women's basketball coach of the University of Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Won eight national championships. 100% student. I love this. 100% of her student athletes graduated. Out of all the years she coached, it's over 30 years of coaching. Every single one of her students graduated. I think that's really cool. She awarded, or she won Olympic medals as both player and head coach. She authored, authored three New York Times bestseller books and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2012 by President Obama. Her book, or she has three books. The one I love is Reach for the Summit, written in 1998. Outlines her teaching philosophy and pathway to success. And she shares her concepts in what she calls the definite dozen. These are 10, 12 characteristics that she has posted around her, uh, around her locker room for her people to see. And I'll go quickly through this. Uh, respect yourself and others. Take full responsibility. Develop and demonstrate loyalty. Learn to be a great communicator. This one is huge. And we've got technology now that allows us to communicate with our students, parents, all that stuff. Using Remind. I love the Remind app. I use it all the time with my students. That, Ruby, those of you guys that use that, and there are a myriad of others. If you know others, please let me know. Uh, discipline yourself so no one else has to. I love that. Make hard work your passion. Don't just work hard, work smart. How many of you times have said, well, this, how many times have you thought, well, I, I, we'll just rehearse more, and we'll just run it a few more times. That's the way to do it. Need, why don't we figure out what we need to do and maximize our time together? Work smart, not hard. I mean, work hard and smart, not just work hard. With the team before yourself, make winning an attitude, be a competitor, change is a must, and handle success like you handle failure. Okay. 
and take full responsibility. And what I'll do is uh, I'll put a PDF of this on my website so you guys can download it because I know we're running short on time. But a lot of this stuff is very similar to what um, to what we've talked about already today. And again, don't wait until next year. Why wait until the future to get to work? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it when I'm feeling better. Let's do it now. I have to. I have to I feel like once a semester I've got to have that talk with my students is why wait to be great? Let's be great now. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like waiting. Waiting sucks. Let's be great now. And another book I want to talk about um, is Quotes from the Summit um, by I think, Pat Summit. It's basically a series of all of her quotes rolled into one collection. It's a remarkable book. And I have highly recommend it. If you don't know whose job it is, it's yours. That I'll say something too. God doesn't take things away to be cruel. And I, and I don't mean this to be a religious hunt to, you know, to offend anybody. If I do, I apologize. But God doesn't take away things to be cruel. He takes away things to make room for other things. He takes away things away to lighten us. He takes things away so we can fly. So, you know, I don't know if in a situation moving forward where things didn't go well, and, you know, responsibilities were taken off my plate and but even I'm looking at my training, because my first job didn't go well. And you know, I believe because I just I wasn't ready for that. And I thought it was over. But probably one of the best things that happened because I learned from it and I moved on about my second job and came to teach on him today because of the mentors I've met. Because I had a different opportunity. So I thought that was really great. Okay. Last person I'll talk about and I'll wrap this thing up is Herb Brooks. I'm Canadian, I have to do a hockey play. <laughs> um, former USA Olympic men's hockey coach. Won three Olympic medals as a player and coach, led the team to the gold medal at the Olympic Games, deleted the, or defeated the heavily favored Soviet Union team during the height of the Cold War. Sports Illustrated called the Miracle on Ice the top sports moment of the 20th century. How many of you have seen the movie Miracle? Yeah, one of it's a great, if you haven't seen it, it's the story of the men's hockey team defeating the Soviet Union in 1980, the heart of the Cold War. And we'll play this clip and then I'll wrap this thing up. They might win nine. But not this game. Not tonight. Tonight, we skate with them. Tonight, we stay with them. And we shut them down because we can. Gino Ariano, who I think is one of the greatest coaches of all time. 
at the University of Connecticut, Bill Belichick, the Patriots, Joe Torrey of the Yankees, and more. So, what now? We can learn a great deal about how to be better leaders and musicians by watching the greatest coaches do what they do. Everything these master teachers do is applicable to us and those who want to be successful in business. It's important for us to stay motivated both as a teacher and a musician to be the absolute best that we can be for the people that we influence every single day. And I wish we had time to play this, but I've uh, got to be fun, unfortunately. But then, uh, co- uh, this, is, this clip is from, I'll, I'll just start it for you guys. This is from the Bay Coast University. He actually coached uh, Franklin, the talented coach of the United States. He uh, actually had a team, has a band record for me.